I'm adding quite a few code samples as I work on uh, adding uh, material to uh, Rust in a Month of Lunches, the uh, the book on Manning. And uh, so every once in a while, some of them look like uh, good ideas for videos. And that is what I'm going to do today. I'm going to look at these uh, from fun or from function, from fun methods. Uh, there's, um, they are for, let's see, there's one for iterator, there's one for array. There might be others, but uh, we'll look at iter iterator and array today. And uh, the way you use them is, uh, so when you, I'll start with the iterator one. So when you have an iterator, you um, usually you, you go uh, impl iterator for, you make some type and then you have this, uh, this iterator type and uh, it's like a custom iterator. But sometimes you just want like a really, a really quick iterator. And uh, it would be nice to do that with, uh, with a function and you can do that with, uh, with from fun. So uh, use standard iter. So you have them here. And also uh, use standard uh, array from fun. And I'll just comment that out because uh, they have the same name. And uh, so you can see it says uh, allows creating a custom iterator, blah, blah, blah. And what you do is you have a, you can see there's a closure in there. And the closure is going to return an option T, which makes sense because um, an iterator is about what happens when you have some and, and what happens when you have none. Like how long does the iterator go? How, how many times does it keep on giving you some until it finally gives you none? And then the iterator is over. So I just wanted to show a quick example. It's quite easy that way. Let's say um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. letters one. So let's say we have, we have A going up to Z or Z if you're an American. And let's say um, we also have uh, letters two. And this one, we want it to go backwards. So what you do is you, uh, you do that and you do rev, but what you do is you put it in brackets because uh, if you do this, see it's trying to do rev on uh, type char but you want it to be on the range. So you make the range first. And now this is a, a range, um, which is uh, which also is uh, can be used as an iterator. And so this one, when you call it, it'll start to give you an A and the other ones, uh, this one will start with Z and go backwards because it's reversed. And so um, so usually when, when you look at an, when you want to, when you use iterators, there are all these fancy methods, like there's zip and there's, uh, um, there's like fold and, and so on. And uh, you what you do is you usually you cycle through all the, uh, the iterator methods. And uh, so rev, min by, min by key. And there are all these, uh, all these convenient ways to, to use an, an iterator. But sometimes you, you kind of have an idea <clears throat> how to Im implement something yourself. And here, let's say we want to join a to Z, so it should be A, Z, and then it should be B, Y, and it should be C, uh, uh, X, and so on. And maybe there's there's probably like a, a method for that in, uh, in in the standard library or maybe the uh, iter tools crate, and it would, it would be like, I don't know, reverse zip or something like that. But you can also just do it uh, yourself if you know exactly what you want to do. So um, let's new iter. So what you can do is... <clears throat> Um, actually, I'll just take that out. It looks better when you don't do it. Uh, standard iter from fun, and you get your closure there. And so now you now we type out what we're going to do uh, to get uh, either a sum or a none. So we will go. Um, there's a lot of ways to do it, but uh, this is probably the best way, the the slickest way. So letters one. Uh, you go next, that'll give you an option. So it'll start with a sum A, and then you can do and then. So let's say first uh, letter, first char. Call it first char. We bring that in, and then we go if let uh, sum uh, second char equals letters two dot next. So this means, <clears throat> and then as you take, um, if you have sum, then uh, you, you take the, the value inside sum, and then you do something else, and then you pass it on as an option. Uh, so here, uh, so if we have, uh, if this gives us a sum, we want to see if we have a sum here as well. 
and if we have them together um, if that's some second chart then we are going to put them into a string so we'll use format and we'll go what's it called uh, first char second char first char second char and put inside some of course and if not none and probably saying needs to be mutable and we go mute mute and I think that should be good and then um, finally let's uh, just print it out so um, new iter uh, for each just call it C uh, print C print line C there we go so we have a an iterator of strings and let's start printing out here and you can see there you go it uh, it works so this is our custom iterator and we didn't have to make a, an iterator struct or anything like that so that was quite nice and then finally let's say we want to make this into an array for some reason so we can use now this this function is a lot weirder so this one's pretty easy but uh, for example um, in the standard library actually it's uh, when this first came out it was about like four four rest versions ago i think it was 1.63 they had this uh let's see if i can remember it let's uh, my array equals standard array from fun like that and what it did is it wrote that and then assert eek uh, my array and uh zero one two three four there you go and somehow that worked and there's all this discussion on when the uh when the new rust version was announced on how exactly how exactly that worked you you take an i and you put an i in and somehow it magically turns into this array of five and the documentation has gotten better since then and uh so i'll just show you uh why that works so the, the reason why this worked actually i'll show you from here is because an array is always uh, so this is a u size five. It's um, so an array is always its own unique type. Depends on the uh, what's inside it and the length. So a u size five uh, array cannot be compared to a u size six array or a u size four array or an i size five array. It has to be exactly the same. So this assert eek is saying we're comparing this to this, and the compiler magically knows that this that to compare the two this has to be five in length and then this has to be well because this is five in length and then so that's fine but then also you know where do these numbers even come from uh and so what what that is is uh it's ac it actually brings in the index if you want so um so if you look at the signet uh not the signature but the function itself here what it does is um let's see so you do uh, from fun um this is the uh the number of elements and so what it does is it starts out with an index and um so it starts out with this uh with this kind of like an array of the same size so if it's uh if you say it's going to be five actually i'm going to just make it a little bit clearer so let my array uh what you usually do if you don't have this assert eek is you tell it the size so this is what you're going to be doing most of the time uh, let my array u size u size 5 equals standard array from fun so this is what you'll usually be doing telling it the exact size because with an iterator you always want to know the exact size and then so now so we're giving it a 5 so we're saying it's 5 in length and um, you start with um, so it says okay that's going to be five long and it just makes up this uh, this array of uh, unit types and then it maps it which lets you turn it into uh, a new array from this one and it calls the function calls the um, the closure here every time so the closure is giving you um, um, what is it so it gives the it updates the index here and it uh, it adds uh, whatever the closure 
uh, is giving out. And so it does that to turn it into uh, an array of the uh, of the same size of the type that you want it to to produce. So, so that means um, you can you don't have to use the index. So, for example, here, um, so this i is going to generate uh, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, but uh, you don't have to use it. Let's say you just want to have an array of five things that always says five, then that is going to uh, just make 5, 5, 5, 5, 5. So I'll just show you my array. We'll run that. You can see 5, 5, 5, 5, 5. Or you can do something like i, and then you can do an array of like tuples. So you can do i5, um, let's see, it's not u size 5 anymore. It is u size uh, i32, and there are five of them. And so this is going to give you 0, 5, 1, 5, 2, 5, 3, 5, 4, 5, 5, 5, like that. So that is the way that works. And um, so you could also do, uh, for example, we want to take these and uh, get uh, get their index and then put them into uh, into this array. So we can say we want a u size, uh, or we want u size and char, and we want it to be uh, 26 because there are 26 letters in the alphabet. And so what we do is we go like this. And uh, we will go, let's uh, character equals new iter, or not character, this is a string actually, string. Let's um, letters equals new iter dot uh, next dot unwrap. We're just unwrapping because we know it's only going to be 26. 26. Uh, have a length of 26 and then you do that letters so you can pull in the index and uh, new iters not mutable right there we go mute new iter so this will say 0 az 1 there you go 1 by and so on and so forth so that is how you use these uh, from fun uh, methods and so you can see they're they're different like just um, from fun is not going to be the same for for every type that implements it so but uh, the what is uh, the same is you have this closure and it's kind of uh, kind of similar it's just this uh, this array from fun has this weird uh, index thing that you have to get used to and um, it actually I spent uh, quite a while looking at it when it first came out because uh, this is just like pretty uh, uh, it takes a little a little while to uh, to figure out. So yeah, those are the uh, those are two uh, upcoming methods. Uh, I'm going to probably add them to uh, to a chapter. Um, it'll be released later on, and uh, I'll see you in the next video.